session. This is going to be really fun. My name is Tim Shields, and if you don't yet know me, I am the founder of Photography Academy, and I'm really looking forward to showing you the way that I edit photos the fast way. Now, let me just preface this. Everyone needs to edit their photos, and if you find that you're spending two hours, three hours on kind of an average photo, then you're not going to be successful as a landscape photographer. It's just too much time. Your time is money and your time is an investment and there's no way that anyone can afford to spend two or three hours editing a photo. And that's why I'm going to show you the fast way, the easy way during this live editing session. Uh, you may recall that last month we held a live photography summit and it was very, very successful. And we had um, hundreds of people who signed up at that time for some private coaching sessions. And this is the technique that I showed those students inside the private coaching sessions. And uh, I have received so many messages since then asking more questions about it and asking for replays of the live coaching. And that's why I decided, all right, I'm just going to show it to everybody. So I'm going to show you my fast way, my easy way, how to edit photos. And uh, I'm going to share my screen. We are going to get started right now. And uh, I'll just point out, I do use Adobe Lightroom for my photo editing. And uh, I don't have a relationship with Adobe Lightroom. I've just found that it is the fastest and easiest program to edit photos. And it's also the easiest to teach. And uh, I have taught uh, literally thousands of photographers from all around the world how to edit photos, how to take beautiful photos. And uh, Lightroom is by far the easiest to use. So I'm just taking a look at the chat here. I'm seeing uh, hello from San Diego, from Hartpool, from Delaware. Uh, good to see you again. Hope it's going well from Bill in Golden, British Columbia. Thank you, Bill Pringle um, from Auckland, New Zealand. So great to see all of you. So I'm going to share my screen and let's get rolling. And I'm going to just give a preface. The first photo that I'm going to show you is something that you would never think that Tim Shields would actually do an edit on because I'm always all about landscapes. But uh, we had so many photos that were submitted. In fact, I had um, seven gigabytes of photos submitted through Dropbox. And I've chosen the photos to edit today that have um, the greatest learning point tied to them. So we had uh, I think it was over 700 photos that were submitted. And uh, usually I do gravitate just towards the landscape. But this first one, you're going to look at it and go, what, Tim, you're editing this? This is not a landscape, but it's a photo that just grabbed my attention so much. And uh, I hope that you are really going to like it as much as I liked it. So here we are. And this is a wedding photo. And I want to demonstrate to you the power of the crop tool. It is such a powerful tool. If I can recommend one tool to you that you should be using at all times to make your compositions more powerful, it is the crop tool. This photo was submitted by Santosh Kumar. And the first thing I'm going to do is use the crop on this. Why am I using the crop? Because all this row of lights along the very top, it is a distraction for me. It's too bright. Remember the principle that the brightest part of the photo attracts the eye. So let's just drop that down. Now there's one more thing. Let's think about the rule of thirds. So I've got the crop overlay on the screen now and it's got those third lines. Well, that tells us where the important thing should be in the photo. And we can see that our main subject, the groom, is not on the third line and the bride is not quite on the third line. So let's just pull down the crop tool like so. And I'm gonna say, well, there's still too much sky here. So let's just change that aspect ratio to a 16 by nine. And now I can stretch it back out again. I want to include this part of the photo. This is almost the most intriguing part for me. I love this part here. That's like the mother and all the aunts watching their kids get married. And then this part here is awesome too. This is the younger sister and the cousins watching the, the, the wedding. And it's just intriguing to see the crowd. I, I just love seeing the, the body posture here. It looks like it was actually arranged in that way. But let's get this crop done quick, quick, quick. And with one quick 
uh, movement, we have now transformed this photo and uh, made it so that it's a balance and symmetry shot. So our two main subjects are exactly on third lines and uh, their heads are on the top third line. It's, it's perfection now. And I'm not going to do anything else with this photo. It looks really great as it is. It looks like it already had some post-processing done on it. So let's move on and get to this one from Lars Hansen. Looks like somewhere in Europe. And um, I note the histogram on this one that Lars has uh, done what's called exposing to the right. See how the bright tones, um, the, the, the shape of the graph is just bumping up against that right side goalpost, which is exactly what we want. But there's a caveat here. And the caveat is that when we're talking about artificial light, man-made lights, it's okay to have some blown out highlights because it is expected. But let's drop down the highlights. Let's open up the shadows. Let's set the white point. And I'm just going to brighten this up until I'm liking what I see. We do have some blown out highlights now, but that's okay because they are artificial man-made lights. And now I look at this and I say, wow, this is really yellow. It's just too darn yellow. Let's take a look at a daylight color balance. No, I'm going to have to go kind of manual on this one and cool this off so that we get some blue in the sky, get some blue back. And let's just play with the tint and... Uh, I'm looking at the sky color while I do this. I don't want to get that purpley look. And that's looking really nice there. I'm noticing that the buildings look like they are kind of angled. So let's go to the crop tool and let's just tilt this so that we can get a little better straight line. So I'm at a minus 0.4. That's looking a lot better. So it's tilted. Now we have kind of a straight horizon. And now let's do some work with the brush tool. This is what I call painting with light. And I've clicked on that brush tool right there. I'm bringing the brush tool in and I'm going to turn. Actually, you know what I'm going to do just for you? I'm going to turn on the selected mask overlay so you can see with red what it is that I'm actually painting. And everything that's red is what I'm painting, but I haven't decided what I'm actually going to do with it yet. And now I've painted and I'll turn off that red spray paint. And now let's just turn up our exposure. I want to see a little bit more on that right side. It was just too black there before. So uh, with a very, very quick edit here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. We have gone from our starting point, which was this, to uh, where we are now. And all I did was adjust essentially four sliders. Do you think you could do that? Yes, you definitely could. I just want to turn up the dehaze a little bit more. The dehaze is like the greatest secret weapon of a landscape photographer. It's called the dehaze slider. And when you turn it up, what it does, it increases contrast in the image in some kind of a special, awesome way. It's a Adobe secret sauce. And I, I love seeing what happens with the dehaze. Let's turn up the saturation on only the orange tones and get a little bit more orange here. Let's just turn up a little bit more yellow. And I think we have something looking really good. So let's click on reset. Look at the original. That's how it used to look. And here is now how it does look. How long did that take me? It took me a few minutes. And that's the amount of time that you should be spending on an average photo retouching is only a few minutes. If I wanted to do maybe one more thing, and it's always so hard to stop, right? You go down a rabbit hole and sometimes you just can't get out. Um, I would just like to take a look at a 16 by nine aspect ratio, maybe just reduce a little bit of that sky. And no, I went too high. I gotta move it back down and click done. There we are. So here's the reset. Uh, that's how it was. And this is how it is. Big change. It still needs a bit of a tilt. It looks like it's tilting to the right, but we need to move on. This one was submitted by Jan Keese Shackle. Uh, this is Arches National Park. Now notice this is a JPEG photo. And usually I don't edit JPEGs because there is not enough light information. Now, as you look at the histogram, look at the shape of the graph. It's bunched up over on the right-hand side, which is telling us this sky has so many blown out highlights, it's not even funny. The sky can't even be used. But let's just try anyway and see what we get. I'm going to drop down the highlights, open up the shadows only a little bit. We don't need to open the shadows much. Set the white point, set the black point. And with setting the black point, I'm really just controlling how much contrast that I actually have. And there's the right amount of contrast. I'm liking that. And so just with one simple set of movements of just four sliders, I was able to make a substantial difference in this shot. Now, 
as I look at this sky, I, I would never personally want to print this and put this on the wall at home because the sky has so many blown out highlights. But let's do a simple sky change on this. And I've right clicked on the thumbnail at the bottom. I click edit in and then edit in Adobe Photoshop 2021 and click edit. And what's going to happen is that Photoshop is going to open with this image in it. And when I'm talking about blown out highlights in the sky, I mean this area here, this uh, the clouds are so bright that they uh, we've lost all the light and color information. So I'm going to change the sky. I'm going to do it in two clicks, maybe three clicks. I click on edit. I go down to sky replacement. And then there will be a, um, an assorted list of skies that I have already pre-saved, but I've already chosen this one. It's kind of one of my favorite go-to skies. And I like that. It's a dramatic sky and it's a lot better than the one that was there with the blown out highlights. I just have to click save, and then I go back to Lightroom, and um, my new version will be right there waiting for me. And uh, we have a dramatic, dramatic change. Now, is there too much sky? I'm gonna say yes, there is too much sky, so I'm gonna go for that 16 by nine aspect ratio. I think there's a little bit too much on the left-hand side as well. Um, uh, too much of that cliff wall. So let's click on that crop right there and take a look at what we started with. So here was our starting point and here is what we were able to convert this photo to. Um, as we think about the composition and the composition is the most important aspect of any kind of photo creation and photo editing, I always think about the foreground. Is the foreground too cluttered? Is it a distraction? And in this case, yes, it kind of is. So let's grab a graduated filter and pull up from the bottom and turn down the, so if I go all the way down, see how dark I can make it? But let's just darken it just a little bit to try and get your eye away from the bottom so that this uh, these this clutter down here, the noisy bushes, are not uh, a distraction. So there we go. There's a really quick photo edit, and we went from this first version right here to this version here. And now this is something that, yes, if I had some kind of an emotional attachment with this place, uh, maybe I took a trip here. I would be very happy to put this on my wall. Um, this photo here was submitted by Lisa Waterman. And um, Lisa, you took a really awesome photo here, but it is breaking my heart that all I have to work with is a JPEG. Because once again, I can't do much with JPEG photos. This is Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. Oregon is such an awesome state for landscape photography. What I want to show you here uh, is simply what a crop can do. So as I look at this photo, before I even touch it, I wanna sit back and say, all right, what is the hero of the story here? What is the main subject? And for me, it is definitely not this tree on the left. It's not all this sky over top, but it's this area of the middle. I like the foreground. I wish there were no footprints on it though. I like the foreground and I like seeing the, the back of the crater but there's just way too much sky. And I also love the reflection. So knowing that, let's jump into the crop tool, the most powerful tool that you have at your disposal. Click on a 16 by nine, and that way we can reduce some of that sky. And uh, I'm just going to recenter right here. I'm using the rule of thirds, right? Notice that the top third line, um, I've got one third sky, I've got one third in the middle, and then about one third is foreground. So let's click on done. And now I'm liking this more. It's more of a more of an ah feeling that I get when I look at this, where we have a much more clear main subject compared to the original where it's just a lot of sky. And I'm not exactly sure what I should look at. So when we go to here, now I know what I should look at. And that was just the crop tool. So great job on that one. Um, this next one, I am sorry to say, I don't know who submitted this, but I like it because this is the classic leading line shot with balance and symmetry in the composition. Whoever took this photo, um, I wish you had saved the photo with your file name. You, you deserve to get credit for this. This photographer took a long time to make sure that the the lines were all straight. Notice how there's kind of an equal amount of visual weight on the left compared with the right. So let's start by, um, notice how this line here is not quite vertical. We're getting some lens distortion. So if you go way down to the bottom 
and you go to the transform panel, you can click on vertical. And now I have straight lines just with one click. That was just so easy to do. So let's do um, a quick edit on this and we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it, right? This is the fast way. Drop down the highlights, open up the shadows, set the white point. And when I set the white point, I'm looking at the, the right side of the histogram in the top right corner there. I don't want the shape of the graph climbing up that right side wall, climbing up the right goalpost, because that means blown out highlights. That's our enemy in landscape photography. So now let's go to the black point and pull it to the left until we have just the right, uh, just the right amount of contrast. And I'm liking that a lot. And now what do I want to do? Okay. I'm, I'm looking back and I'm saying, okay, what is like, the yummy goodness inside this cream filled donut right here. Like where is the jelly? And I'm thinking it is right here. And what I would love to see is if I can kind of get a tropical look going on, even though there is not a tropical look to begin with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a brush and paint over just the water. So let's uh, turn on that red spray paint so you can see what I'm painting over and i'm just painting over da, da 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 so now you can see everything that's red and once again i am using lightroom classic as my photo editing program there's a difference between the program that's just called lightroom and this program i'm using which is lightroom classic if you're using a computer you want to be using Lightroom Classic and not just Lightroom. So um, I'm holding down the Alt button on my keyboard and I am, you can see that there's a minus inside the, inside my brush. And what I'm doing here is I'm removing my, my effect that I just brushed over the water. I'm removing it on those posts right there. So let's turn off that red spray paint and now let's grab the tint and let's pull the tint to the left into the green zone so that we can just kind of get more of that sense of, of tropical water by uh, creating some green water right there. I'm gonna grab one more new brush, a new brush, and let's make uh, a source of light right in the middle because we want the eye of your viewer to go right down the middle into, into the back of the photo. That's what a leaning line shot is all about. Okay, I'm liking that. Now, some of this top part here is a little yucky. It's not overly beautiful. So let's grab a neutral or a, uh, a graduated filter and I drag down from the top. I'm just gonna darken that top part. Remember, I can darken it like crazy if I want to, but I just wanna take away the emphasis on the top and let's grab a new one. And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. We don't really need to do this so much, but I just am. Actually, I'm just gonna warm that just a bit too. I'm turning up the temperature on that sand. And let's do the same on the right side, new brush. And I'm pulling over from the left. Let's just darken just a bit. And then one more time, new brush, pull it over from the left and just darken a bit. So this is kind of focusing the eye of the viewer down on the middle. Let's do one last thing before I move on. Let's uh, paint over the sky. So I have a thing turned on called auto mask and auto mask means that I can use the brush to paint in um, just the sky and you'll notice that I'm not painting in over top of the concrete, which is really awesome. This is called creating a mask. So I'm just going over the sky here. I'll just paint in right here and right here and right here. And I'm trying to do this as fast as I can because uh, we have so many more awesome photos to edit here and that's done. Turn off the spray paint and now let's get some more blue in that sky. I'll do that by turning down the temperature. I'm cooling off the sky. I'm just gonna turn up just a touch of tint. I don't want it to have a green look. There we are. So uh, last but not least, I want one more brush um, on this ceiling. I just want some more warmth here. It's not warm enough for me. And I think I'm gonna do that here on the sand and let's just warm up the color temperature. There we are. Yes, love that. Love, 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 love. Yes, that was it. So let's take a look at where we've come from now. Here's the, here's the before, and that was uh, a raw photo straight out of the camera, and here is the after. Uh, someone just posted, will there be a rerun? Yes, this is going to stay inside the Photography Academy group, this post. Uh, let's look at this one from Rhonda Kingen, and I love photos like this. Rhonda did such a great job at exposing to the right. Look at this histogram here. 
um, the, the shape of the histogram is just touching, just kissing the right hand side. That's exactly what we want. So let's do a super fast edit on it. Drop the highlights, open the shadows, set the white point. I'm looking at the histogram to do that. I don't want to blow out the highlights in the sky, set the black point, And now I'm sitting back and I'm asking myself once again, what is the main subject? What do I want people to look at? Well, yes, it has a totally cool sky. Yes. I love the pier. Yes, I love the the wave action on this wave. I'm going to say over here, there's maybe a little bit too much over on the right. So let's just see what we do. If we pull down, um, I'm just doing a crop on this. And by the way, I'm looking as well at the horizon line and I'm seeing that it needs a bit of a tweak, um, not a straight horizon, which is sort of, it just bothers my my OCD. There we go. And we will pull this up a bit and let's just call that done and take a look. I'm liking that more. And now I see uh, better, um, not so much sky. I know more what to look at. Let's grab a graduated filter, pull down from the top, get some color going on the sky. Let's warm it up, warm, 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 and turn up some tint and just get a little more color there. And let's grab a brush and make it small and uh, turn on the spray paint so you can see what I'm doing. I want to get you to look at this line of of uh, sort of spray and some of some of this stuff some of the little patterns and everything that are right here are really cool i love that okay in the interest of time i'm going to stop even though i want to keep going because it's just so fun and let's turn up some light on that so now we see that even more and i'm really liking that so click on done and let's just play with the white balance overall let's try daylight um too purple but i could correct that and let's try a little warmer let's go cloudy and i'm liking that more and let's go even warmer let's go shade and i'm going to go back to cloudy and click on cloudy there and it's just a little too purpley in the sky so i got to click back on my graduated filter and reduce the tint there i don't want that really magenta look going on in the sky um, if I had more time on this one, I would do some brush strokes up in the sky and try and add some cool areas so that we have a difference between um, cool areas and warm areas. Um, last thing in the sky, I want to add some dehaze. There we are. Dehaze is, as I said, the absolute magical secret weapon of landscape photography when you're doing your post processing. I love the dehaze slider so much. It just on its own just adds so much drama to your photo. So let's just turn up the exposure just a little bit more. There we are. And let's, um, let's just take a look at the before. So there's our before on this one. And there is the after and uh, I'm really liking it. So great job on that one, Rhonda King. And um, I think a different Rhonda submitted this one. This is another Rhonda. And um, I like this one. And as I look at it, I love the fact that we have a curved leading line, which is this road. I love those those tall straight trees, but I'm thinking that because this sky is so bright and it's overblown, it's blown out highlights, right? Look at the histogram on the right side. It's climbing the goalpost on the right side and we don't want that. So um, I, the first thing I'm going to do is just take a look at uh, what this would look like as a one-to-one, -one, one by one crop. Now, uh, Instagram likes one by one aspect ratios a fair bit. And uh, so this crop would work really well with, with Instagram. So I'm cropping that out. So now we have more of the main subject that we're looking at. What I wanna do first, I'm gonna darken the whole photo and then let's just choose to brighten only the areas that we want the viewer to look at. I'm just gonna add some contrast. Let's make this moody, moody, moody and click on the brush. I want viewers to look at the road. I think that that road is just awesome. So I'm just going to turn off auto mask on this one and let's brighten up the road and I'm brushing over the road, uh, brush, 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 brush done. And now let's just turn up the lights on the road. It's like we're shining a spotlight on the road. And I'm also going to warm the photo up just a touch or warm up the road. There we are. And just with such a simple thing that I just did right there, just a couple of movements, we made such a massive difference in the photo. I am going to try and darken the foreground just a little bit because it is grabbing my eye a little too much. Let's darken that foreground with that graduated filter. Boom. And now let's take a look at the before. There's the before. And here is the after. And we were able to do that in just minutes. We made a, a moody, 
really cool looking photo, kind of a rainy look, Pacific Northwest style of photo, and I love it. So great job on that one, Rhonda. Um, moving on, we have a photo here from the one and the only Wendy Klein from Brisbane, Australia. And Wendy is uh, one of the admins in the Photography Academy Facebook group, along with Eva Maria and um, Annette Unheim. And uh, Wendy has perfected the art of taking incredible sunset photos. I mean, her sunset photos are just off the charts. Look at this one. But you know, it's so interesting as I talk with Wendy and I've gotten to know her, and you know what separates Wendy from so many photographers? It's the fact that she has the get up and go, and that she is constantly looking to find new places, researching and planning and saying, I want to go here. And after that, I want to go there and actually making the effort to get out the door and go to these kinds of places. There are so many of us who will talk the talk and we, we buy all the gear and we watch the videos on YouTube and we, we are photographers, but we're not actually making the effort consistently to walk out the front door of your home and go to places like this. And if you want to be able to take great, great, great photos, then obviously, number one, you have to walk out the door at home. So that's what Wendy does so well. So I've done uh, a little processing on the sky there, and I'm going to brush over the right-hand side uh, sand, and I want to brighten that up on its own just a little bit. I love that. Oh, so good. And I want to warm up that color just a bit, not too much. I don't want it to look yellow. I'd still want that tan look. And then I'm going to grab one more new brush. And this intrigues me, the place where the surf is hitting is meeting the sand. And we're getting those reflections there. So just on its own, I'm going to uh, brighten up that area a little bit. And let's just see if we can warm it a touch and turn up the tint on it, just to get some more color there. So uh, last but not least, let's get some more color on these rocks because we can't quite see any of the details there. So I'm going to turn on auto mask and just quickly outline here. I'll turn on that red spray paint so you can see what I'm doing quickly outline around some of these rocks so that we can, um, just turn up the, turn up the light on them just a little bit. And so that you can see some of the detail there we are. There's the quick, uh, the really quick cut out there and turn up some light on it. Just a touch. Uh, I'm going to do a crop on this one too. Even though I love this sky, I think that it has too much sky. So let's go to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And I'm going to pull this in a little bit and pull that up like so and click done. And let's take a look at the before. And there's the before on that one, a lot of sky. And there's the after. And um, wow, what an incredible photo from Wendy Klein. Thank you for submitting this one, Wendy. This one from Arun Kumar. And this one, I, I really like this photo. Um, as I sit back and I look at this and I ask myself, all right, what's the main subject? And I, I know that these two people have got to be included in your definition of main subject. We have a lot of sky. We have half the photo is sky. It's way too much. So let's really quickly drop down the highlights, open up the shadows, set the white point, looking at the histogram, set the black point like so. Let's grab the crop tool. Let's go with a 16 by nine aspect ratio on this one again. I'm actually going to pull it in a fair bit, which has the effect of moving these main subjects over to the right a little bit more. So there we are. It's a little bit too green. Uh, I don't like it being quite that green. So I'm going to go to the saturation sliders and grab the green saturation and just pull it back just a little bit. Um, I'm going to have to pull the yellow back with that because yellow is such a big component of green. There we are. And also I'm finding this part of the foreground to be a little bit uh, of a distraction. So there we are. And let's, um, Let's uh, turn down the light on that one and click done. Let's take a look at the before. I'll reset that. There's the before. And here is the after. Big change on this one. Um, this one with the elephants is really awesome. Sean Ward. Now, once again, look at the histogram. The histogram is showing us this sky is totally blown out. What can we do about that? Let's send it over to Photoshop and let's change the sky. So I'm going to go edit in, edit in Photoshop. And then I go to Photoshop and it should open. There it is. Go to edit, 
go to sky replacement and I'm going to use that same sky that I used on the last one just because it's perfect. I don't want a sky that has sunshine actually showing and look at the difference on that. Just boom. It's such a quick difference. Just click save and then I go back to Lightroom and it's going to open back up in Lightroom for me as soon as Photoshop has finished with it. Come on. Come on Lightroom. Come on Photoshop. Do it for me. There we are. And there it is. So let's do a quick crop on this one. There's too much of this bush over on the right hand side. And so thinking about what is our main subject? Well, it's the clump of, of elephants. It's the group of them together. So there's too much foreground here as well. So I have to change the aspect ratio. I'm going to go to a 16 by nine. I don't want to crop off the top of those trees. It won't look right. And now I can afford to go just a little bit bigger uh no i don't want that and done and click done and there we have i haven't even touched the main editing of the photo on this one but just with changing the sky and changing the um, aspect ratio we have such a huge difference look at the before on this one there's the before with the blown out sky and here's the after and now it's like wow totally dramatic if i had more time i would take the brush tool and i would brush over some of these elephant trunks and the ears and try and get a little bit more drama happening here now here's another one that i don't normally do this is from holly storm totally cool photo oh no this isn't <laughs> that's the done that was my practice okay you shouldn't have seen that so on this one um we take a look at the it looks like the sky is blown out um, I'm asking myself, what is the main subject here? Clearly it's the car, but it's also the sand being thrown. So I sent it over to Photoshop and I changed the sky on it. I used the same dramatic sky and I cropped in tighter. And this is the effect that I got. Now I want to show you the real key to making a photo like this work. And the key was that I took a brush and I painted over the sand that's being thrown. See everything that's red there. I painted over that. And what I did, I grabbed the highlights and the whites slider and I turned them up. So what I did there, everything that I brushed that is already bright, I made what's already bright even brighter. And then with what I brushed, I made what's already dark, darker by turning down the blacks and turning down the shadows. And that creates contrast within this image. So look what happens when I turn off the brush. Um, here we go right here. So there's the brush off on the sand that's being thrown. There's brush off and here's brush on, brush off, brush on. And it just creates so much more drama in the photo. So here's our before and uh, with a lot of sky, a lot of foreground. And here's our after with less sky, less foreground, bigger main subject. And you'll notice as well that I put the car on the left third line. And that's the important thing. I'm using the rule of thirds here for that crop. Once again, the crop tool, so so powerful. Um, here's another one that I would never normally edit, but it's just over the top in the cute factor, Dimitri Villan. And the first thing that I thought of when I saw this photo, it doesn't need a lot of editing, but it's the crop once again, it's the composition. And whenever I'm talking about the crop tool, you can almost substitute that word with the word composition because your composition is literally the foundation of your photo. It is the most important aspect of taking great photos. So we need to change the composition of this photo. We have the head of the cat right in the middle and we need to use rule of thirds for this particular photo. So if I just pull down, now I have the head of the cat. Actually, I'm just going to pull it up. Yeah. Um, I have the head of the cat at the intersection of the top third and the left third. And now I click on done and instantly I have so much of a more powerful photo here. Um, and it just, all I did was I changed the composition and that's it. And I haven't even touched any of the sliders at this point. So let's just take a look at the before there's your before. And here is your after way more powerful using the rule of thirds. This one here is totally cool. I, I really was struck with this image of the naturalness of it. Um, it was submitted by Lee Van and I don't know where this is. I can make some pretty good guesses, but um, I like it a lot. Now, as I look at it, I notice that there's no sky, which is uh, a, a good composition choice is not to have sky. Sometimes we, we, as landscape photographers, we so often think we always need sky, but a lot of times having sky actually detracts from our photo. 
uh, especially when it's a blah and a boring sky. So just by changing four sliders, I have made uh, a massive difference in the photo. And if I turn up the dehaze, I will see even more of the photo, create a little more drama. But I'm finding that the foreground is really, really bright right here. And this part here is, uh, because it's so bright, it's grabbing my eye. So let's grab a, 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 a graduated filter. And I pulled up from the bottom. And I'm just going to darken the foreground a little bit. And let's do the same up at the top and grab another graduated filter. And I'm going to pull down from the top. I just don't want your eye going back there because that's not what the interesting part is. The interesting part are these people who are um, smiling and looking at each other. So let's take a look at the before. And this is like literally a one minute photo edit, right? It was just so easy to do. And there is the after and a massive difference. We could do more with it, but we have to move on. I'm going to do another one here. And on this one, uh, it was submitted by Tamis Mondal. Great photo. Looks like Yosemite. And um, as I sit back and I look at it, I think, okay, great job that Tamis did with uh, framing in the, the mountains uh, underneath these tree branches. It's maybe a little bit of clutter, but however, it is, it is a form of framing. Uh, we have beautiful reflections, but we have too much reflection. We have too much foreground. Like what is the main subject? Think composition. What is this a photo of? What is the main subject? And for me, the yummy goodness in the middle of this cream filled donut is right here. And so I want this to be prominent in the photo. So I need to change up the composition. Now you could have done this in camera when you were in the field, which is always the best way to do it, but I'm going to do it now through a little bit of, uh, of a crop. And I'm also saying that over on the right hand side, it's maybe a little bit too much right there. So let's just pull in this crop, uh, get a little less sky and a little less reflection and click done. And now we have a more powerful composition. So you could have achieved this by zooming in in the field. But nevertheless, it's a great photo. It has uh, so many good things going for it. And with just four sliders, turn down the highlights, open up the shadows, set the white point while looking at the histogram, and then set the black point so that there's enough contrast. Just those four I have transformed this photo completely. Let's change the white balance. Let's try a daylight white balance, uh, pretty green. Let's go to a cloudy white balance, which is a little bit warmer. Uh, I'm going to go back to the daylight and I'm going to reduce the tint. I'm just going to pull the tint over to the right just a little bit and now go down to the saturation sliders and I'm going to pull back on the green a touch and the yellow. It's just a little over the top, a little too nuclear. And there we are. Are, and I'm liking it. If we want to focus the eye of the viewer more on the main subject in the middle, we can pull up from the top uh, with a graduated filter and just darken it just a touch like I just did. And we could do the same on the very top. I can pull down from the top and I can use this really cool thing called range mask. And you use range mask to um, prevent the effect from happening on the mountains. So I've just done that and I'm going to reduce the, the uh, overall brightness in the sky just a bit. There it is, and click done. Let's take a look at the before. There's the before on this photo, and here is the after on the photo, and it's just a, overall a more powerful composition. So I have been going now for 40 minutes and I have just edited uh, a ton of photos. And um, I, I wanna spend a few minutes to tell you about the four mistakes that photographers consistently make time and time and time again. Um, as I started in the beginning of this presentation, in my role as the founder of Photography Academy, I have coached uh, thousands of students thousands of photographers from around the world. And when I take a look at the types of mistakes that are being made, there seems to be a pattern that comes up. And I first noticed this pattern in my own photography. And uh, mistake number one, actually, I'll just preface this with, with one thing. Uh, for many years, I was a hobbyist photographer. This is the first camera that I bought when I was 13 years old, bought it with money from my part-time job. I was in grade eight at the time. 
maybe grade nine. And uh, I've been taking pictures for my entire life. And I thought I was a pretty good photographer. And then it was about 12 ish years ago that I found myself on a photography trip on the edge of the Grand Canyon. And I realized that I actually didn't know what I was supposed to be taking photos of. I didn't know what I was supposed to be truly aiming my camera at. I didn't know how to actually create a photo with a beautiful and powerful composition. And it was almost like a slap in the face for me because it was this realization of my own personal failing that I didn't have what it takes to create photos like I was seeing everybody else online was creating. And I had this stunning recognition that, oh my goodness, I thought I was a great photographer for all these years. And really in reality, the photos that I'm creating are just tourist snapshots, just the same as everybody else. So it was at that time that I decided to throw myself at the study of landscape photography to try and figure out how I was going to fix this problem. And over the course of years, and through probably thousands of hours of trial and error and study, and also through one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring from professional photographers, I finally developed a four-step system that helps every photographer to take beautiful photos. So getting back to what I started this with was, what are the four mistakes that photographers keep on making over and over again? These are the mistakes that I was making. Mistake number one is not getting yourself to the perfect place at the perfect time. And this involves people who believe that they can essentially um, take spontaneous photos that are going to turn out to be really awesome landscape photos. It just doesn't happen. Every good landscape photo that you have ever seen in your life where you say, wow, that's a beautiful photo, it has been planned in advance. And that planning piece is mistake number one. Mistake number two is the composition. So now you've got yourself to the right place at the right time, but now you have to lift your camera up. You actually have to aim it at something. You need to know, should I be closer to the main subject? Should I be farther away? Should I be tilting left? Should I be tilting right? Should I be zooming in or, or zooming out? And that is called the composition. And the composition is like the foundation of every great photo. If you don't have your composition solid, then it's like building a house on the sand. The house is going to come down. But if you have a solid foundation, a strong one, then everything that happens after that is going to work out perfectly. So mistake number two is choosing compositions that are not powerful, that are not using the rules of composition effectively. Mistake number three is the camera settings. You've heard me in this presentation talk numerous times about blown out highlights and how important it is to make sure that your photo is sharp and that it is correctly exposed, that you don't have blown out highlights. And so that comes back to an inability to know how to actually use the settings on your camera. That's mistake number three, is incorrect camera settings, bad focus points. And mistake number four is with the post-processing. And usually the mistakes that I see are grossly over-processed photos, where the photo has just been over, over, over done. So I just mentioned to you that I have created a four step system and I'd like to tell you about that four step system. And before I even show it to you, I can tell you this, if my 85 year old mother were to come to me and I really wish she would and say, Tim, I finally want to learn how to take beautiful photos like you do. Can you please show me? The first thing I would say to her is mom, you need to watch my photography transformation four-step system masterclass. This is it. This is the way to create beautiful photos. So I'm going to show that to you now. And um, there we are. So this, I want to introduce you to the photography transformation four-step system. And uh, this is the system that literally thousands of photographers have taken. As a matter of fact, we are approaching 9,000 photographers who have taken this exact same masterclass that I'm showing you right now. This is literally the four-step system to how you can take award-winning photos. And when I started using this same four-step system, this is when my photography started to get noticed on social media. I started to win awards. People started asking me to if they could buy my prints. This made 
all the difference in the world. And this changed the way that I took every photo for the rest of my life. And it will do the same for you. So, um, this is how you will be able to create magazine quality photos that will make your friends say, wow, did you take that without wasting money on new camera gear that does not result in better photos and without the complex explanations. So here's what it includes. Um, it is a six module masterclass. And remember those four mistakes that I told you about? Well, it addresses each one of those in the four step system. Um, this is over seven hours of content. You get a certificate of completion when you're finished with it. It has subtitles in English and Spanish. You get lifetime access to this masterclass. You can watch it on any device. You can watch it on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer. Um, at the end of every lesson, there is a Q and A session that um, I recorded in front of a live audience. And you can listen to that so that all of your potential questions will be answered. I also have skills assignments after the end of each lesson and I push you through to finish it. So one of my students is named Terry Martin. She's from Oregon and she wrote on Facebook. She just graduated from the six week landscape transformation masterclass. It was phenomenal. Tim gave me personal encouragement and shared all the secrets. It's an experience. It's not just information. It really is transforming. And that's how I created this program, not just to be information because you can find information on YouTube, but this is a transformation. You will be, a, you will be different when you come out the other end of this program from Deborah Love. She just completed the class. She wrote on Facebook. It was totally amazing. She learned so much that she struggled with before Tim teaches in a way that's easy to grasp and easier to learn. I highly recommend this class to anyone ready to take their skills to the next level uh, from Mark Zane. He just completed it. It was, he said, it's one of the best courses I have taken. Tim's an excellent teacher and photographer and the content was exceptional. This is the certificate of achievement that you get when you finish. And uh, hopefully you'll be like Jaspreet Hansro here, who was so proud of getting his that he uh, posted it to Facebook. Um, we have had, as I said, over, or we're approaching 9,000 people who have taken this same transformation masterclass. And uh, these are just a small smattering of people who have written in. We have literally hundreds and hundreds of public testimonials and review just like these on uh, Google reviews and on Facebook reviews. And uh, I'm obviously not going to read uh, any more of them, but uh, I can tell you that it is a life changing photography course. So I'm just going to play you a 60 second video here with uh, some of the transformations that uh, we've seen through our students. My photography has improved by leaps and bounds and I've doubled my social media presence on Instagram. And finally, I've begun to sell prints uh, that I have created uh, using the techniques that I learned in the class. I learned how to use Lightroom when I've never even used it before. I actually have people asking me how much are my prints when I thought, what? I, I hadn't even finished my final assignment yet. Since I've taken the photography transformation class, I've actually won a couple of awards myself. And the improvements are considerable. I would recommend this class to anyone who is just starting out or of intermediate standard. If you're thinking about joining the master class, well, quit thinking and get on board. You will be very happy that you did. Just do it. The only way you're gonna make any change and to see results is to sign up for it. Um, it will absolutely blow your mind just how good a photography can be after taking the class. So who does it work for? It works for people who are beginners in photography and who want to create stunning photos. It also works for intermediate and experienced photographers who want to take their photography to the next level and win photo awards maybe. And it works for advanced photographers. Even if you've been doing photography for your entire life, like 45 years of photography, if you want to create a body of work, a body of fine art photography that sells, this is the answer for you. So the number one reason people don't get started with this is that you might be thinking, oh, I just don't have the time, not another time sucker. But the beauty of this is you can take this training at your own pace. You will own it for life. Even if you're on holidays, you can watch the course content on your phone, wherever you are. You can be lying in bed before you fall asleep and you can be watching it on your phone and you can take it at your own pace. 
So you can watch it on any device, on your laptop, your desktop, your phone, or your iPad. And the value of this course is $997. Uh, it's part of a bundle. And you also get admission to our closed mastermind group. This is a group that we host on Facebook and it's your support community while you take the masterclass and after you take the masterclass, it's a small closed group. You display your assignments there. You share your experiences with other students. You get feedback from me and other community members. You share ideas, you share your creativity, you get inspired there. And it's a place where you can ask questions. So no more feeling alone and losing motivation, no more giving up because you lose your motivation, no more asking questions online to only be met with silence, no more knowing not who to ask. This is where you ask your questions. Now, you may be thinking, oh, I don't like to participate in groups, but it isn't a problem because even if you choose not to post your work, you will learn from the comments and photos of everyone else in the group. And uh, even if you're really busy and have a very busy schedule, we all do, you can ask a question 24 hours a day and then you get the response at your convenience. So the value of being in this group is $497. Uh, also included in this bundle are my entire collection of presets. Now, what the heck are presets? Remember, I just showed you Lightroom Classic and how to edit photos in Lightroom Classic. Well, these presets, um, are like one click photo editing. You're able to see various looks for your photos just with clicking one button. So you can see, I wanna see it colder. I wanna see it warmer. I wanna see it lighter. I wanna see it darker. I want more yellow tones. And so you can just go through the presets and see which one you like the most. Um, the first set of presets is for your phone. These are called the Lightroom mobile presets. You can just upload these straight into your phone and then you can use them with the Lightroom app that is actually free to install. And uh, you also get my signature collection of presets, which is the one on the right. Uh, this is the single best selling product that we've ever sold. We've sold, um, I think probably around 20,000 of these Lightroom presets collection. And this is included with the bundle. These are just a few of the hundreds of reviews that we've received for our preset collection. Uh, it will help you to edit your photos fast and easy and to give your photo new looks very quickly so that you could use that as a starting point for your own personal edits. Um, so you may be thinking that using Lightroom or Photoshop is too complicated, but the presets that are included in this bundle remove the stress of needing to learn a new program. And with mobile presets, you can even do it on your phone. So the total value of the uh, photography post-processing tools bundle is $540. And it also includes these two courses. Now these are my first two original courses, Lightroom Jumpstart, which is a beginner's course on how to use Lightroom. And on the right, Photography Jumpstart, which is a beginner's course on how to use your camera and how to take photos. And this is the Jumpstart bundle where you're going to master the essentials of photography and camera settings if you are a beginner. Where, and you can copy my simple step-by-step -step photo post-processing in Lightroom. Now remember Wendy Klein, who we edited one of her photos in this live session, she took uh, photography jumpstart and she said this course is for everyone who is wanting to learn from basics right through to more advanced it's the best explained photography course I've seen I highly recommend this course as you will not be disappointed and coming from Wendy that is saying a lot um, the photography jumpstart on its own we have sold uh, um, I don't know how many a lot of this course on its own and we have five star reviews on this course, this beginner's photography course. And the same thing with Lightroom Jumpstart, which is an entry level to how you can get started with Lightroom. So the Jumpstart bundle has a value of $297. And there's still more that I'm including in this bundle because you will also get these three courses and it's called Photography the Easy Way. And um, these are step-by-step -step tutorials where you can learn my system so that you can learn the easy way. So the first one on the left, how to create a panorama photo called an HDR panorama. And I show you how I created that Hollywood sign photo, which is an HDR panorama. Um, the one in the middle is how to use Photoshop the easy way. And the one on the right is how to use presets, presets that are included in this bundle, how to use them the easy way. Um, you'll learn the easy techniques and tricks that are normally complicated 
and you only learn the need to know items. I get straight to the point. These are concise trainings. They're bite-sized so you can watch them in one session. So the value of this bundle is $290. So here's everything you're getting so far. You're getting the the main flagship training, the Landscape Photography Transformation Masterclass, that is the four-step system. This is, this is what I base all of my training in Photography Academy on, is the four-step system. You're getting admission into the Photography ma Mastermind, you're getting the post-processing tools, you're getting the Jumpstart Bundle, and you're getting those three easy way classes. The total value is $2,600. Now, I am not going to charge you $2,600, but if I did, and this program was finally able to help you create stunning landscape photos that you will want to print and put on your wall, would it be worth it to you to finally eliminate that frustration and uh, self-doubt and overcome your photography problems so you can take photos that look like this one? If all it did was help you create stunning pieces of artwork that helped you win photography awards and sell prints, would it be worth it? If it helped you overcome your internal doubts and fears, would it be worth it? If it helped you create exceptional photos, even if you're just taking pictures on your phone, would it be worth it? So I had two choices. I could either just make a really, really cheap program or I could make a really, really valuable program that actually changes lives and transforms people. And that's what I did. So the Photography Transformation 4-Step System has a value of $2,600. The regular price is $997. And I'm giving you a scholarship today because you are with me live on this uh, web class. And you've demonstrated you're an action taker. And I am putting the price down to $297. Uh, if you go to my website, photographyacademy.com, you will see it for $397, but I'm taking $100 off uh, during this live presentation. So if you would like to take advantage of this and join the other 9,000 people who have changed their photography forever, then I invite you to sign up and join this program and change the way that you will take pictures for the rest of your life. Now I have a link in the, um, in the description of this video and um, I'm just going to grab that link right now and I'm going to drop it into the chat just so that we have it all in one place. But if you look up at the top, there is a link and here I'm typing in here, the link. And if you click on the link that's in the chat, it will take you to the order form and uh, you'll be able to get the $100 off of this program. So I'm going to start taking a look at uh, some of the questions that are in the chat. I'm just going to go back to um, my camera view here. And there we go. There's me. And um, I'm just taking a look for any questions. And I'll just, you know, I just want to say that um, the way that I used to take pictures, it, it may be the way that you take pictures as well, is that you have an intent of taking some really great photos and you arrive at a specific location and you um, walk around and you wonder, hmm, what is it that looks good here? What would look good as a photo? Is it this or is it that? Should I walk closer? Should I walk further away? Should I be taking a wide angle shot and get the whole scene with my wide angle lens? Or should I be narrowing right down so that I have, so that I'm, I'm focusing in on one thing and cropping out? And the, all these questions are part of the four step system so that you're going to know before you even arrive at the photography location, you're going to know exactly what photo you want, what photo you want to come away with. And knowing that in advance, being able to visualize the composition you want before you even take the picture, it will make all the difference in your photography. And I teach you how to do that as part of step one of the four-step system. Step one of the four-step system is exactly how to get to the right place at the right time so that you can take the perfect photo. And uh, 
All right. Um, so someone was just saying I didn't get the link for the one hundred dollar credit. So it uh, the link that I put into the chat uh, takes you to the order form that has the one hundred dollars off, and it gives it to you for two hundred and ninety seven dollars. So if you go to photographyacademy.com um, and you were to take a look, and I'm just going to do that actually right now and show you. And I'm going to share my screen one more time. There we are. Here's photographyacademy.com. And if I go to the shop page and I go down to, where is it? There it is, the Photography Transformation Masterclass. And uh, you will see that the price on here is going to be $3.97 when I get to the bottom of the page. And I think I'm almost at the bottom here, $3.97. And so the link that I just gave to you in the chat and at the top of the uh the post that you're watching this on has $100 off. It's at $297. So we are going to be um, finally putting the price up to $397 once and for all, but I am giving you this price at $297 and uh, it is at $100 off. So I'm not seeing, um, I'm seeing a message here from Jason Stedry. Thank you for your master classes, Tim. I have stepped out of my comfort zone and uh, I am so glad to hear that. Um, I'm just looking for any other questions. Um, how do you get Lightroom Classic without subscribing to it? I would like to own the software. So this is an Adobe thing, right? Um, Lightroom is owned by Adobe and I use Lightroom Classic and they do not, to my knowledge, offer a one-time purchase of Lightroom Classic or Photoshop anymore. You have to buy it on the subscription and the cost is $9.99 per month. And the way that you get that plan, the way that you find it, is that you type in Adobe Photography Plan. And uh, here, I'm gonna do that right now in Google, Adobe Photography Plan. And you type that in in Google and um, you click on Compare Photography Plans. And I'm gonna to go to the United States website and there it is right there, the photography plan, 20 gigabytes, it's $9.99 a month and it gives you Lightroom and Lightroom Classic, the one you want is Lightroom Classic, and it also gives you Photoshop. So you will always have the new versions. Now I know that nobody wants to spend money on a monthly subscription and I'm not selling Adobe products, but um, the thing is that uh, when you, when you have always the newest version of Photoshop and the newest version of Lightroom Classic, you're always going to be having the newest features. And that means a lot because Adobe's putting out new stuff all the time. Like um, I remember when they put out the HDR functionality that within Lightroom, you could finally create an HDR photo. You used to need a $100 software for that separately, but then Adobe adopted it. And then it was Adobe in Lightroom. They said, all right, we're gonna allow you to be able to make panoramas. And with two clicks, you can make a panorama now. And then they said, we're gonna show you how, we're gonna include functionality of how to do an HDR panorama in two clicks. So they added that. And then it was doing the sky replacement in Photoshop. And that's new as well within the past few months. So they keep coming out with new features that they're adding on and the features have been really great. And you get those for $9.99 a month. You'll always have the newest thing. And um, that's the only way that I know of with how to get Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, Barry Schaefer, Tim is an awesome instructor. Thank you so much, uh, Barry. I appreciate that. Um, Tim, it's always a pleasure to watch you edit photos. As you were editing in this program, my thoughts were nearly identical to yours. Oh, that's awesome to, to hear that. And unfortunately, because I'm watching on a, I, I can't see who sent that. I can just see the comment and I can't see the name from, from Facebook. I can just see the YouTube names with the program that I'm using. Um, and I think, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. So I will sign off. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, you know, I do have a call to action for you and it's on my t-shirt and I say this at the end of every time I go live, I'm just gonna sit up here. So take a look at the t-shirt and it says explore, create, inspire. Why is that the motto, the motto of Photography Academy? Why did we choose that? Okay, it has deep life level, heart level meaning. Here it is. Number one our, in our motto, explore. You need to have the mindset as a nonstop explorer. So that every time you're on Instagram and you see a photo that you like, you are saying to yourself, where is that and when can I get there? 
Is it close to home? Is it far away from home? Can I plan a trip in a year, in two years, in three years? Is it part of my five-year plan? Being a nonstop explorer, it doesn't mean that you're always running out your door with your Indiana Jones hat on, but it does mean that you are always at least mentally planning when you are going to be able to go out to get yourself to the right place at the right time to take awesome photos. And it's a mindset. And remember when I was talking about Wendy Klein, why is it Wendy Klein is able to take such incredible photos? Does she have a genius IQ that somehow she is smarter than 99.9% .9 of the population? She is super smart for sure. But I'm going to say, no, that's not the reason why she's able to take such awesome photos. It's because she has this mindset as a nonstop explorer and she's taking action to get out there. She's planning and she is researching nonstop. That's what being an explorer is. That's number one. Number two is create. So you, you have your camera and your camera is your brush. You are an artist. You are like a painter, except that your brush is your camera and that you are actually making the effort to pick up your camera and walk out the door of your home. And that is the creative process. You have an option. You can stay at home and watch Netflix nonstop, or you can choose to be a creator instead. Do you want to be a consumer nonstop or be a creator? And I invite you to be a creator and to say to yourself that you are far more valuable as a creator than you are as a consumer. And so being a creator is a nonstop mindset that you need to have, that you're going to make the effort and going to create. And when you do those first things, when you are the explorer and you are the creator, then you will in turn inspire everybody who is in your life, even people who you don't know, they will be inspired by the, the art that you create. So that is how we got our motto explore, create, and inspire. And I invite you to do that, to be a nonstop explorer and creator. And by doing that, you will inspire other people. So I invite you today to join me in the photography transformation program. It will change the way you take pictures for the rest of your life. You'll be creating beautiful photos that you're going to be so proud of that are going to be stunning. Your friends and family are going to go, whoa, did you seriously take that? Or did you buy that when they see it on your wall at home? So thanks everybody. Take care. And I will see you in the next live event. Bye-bye.